Hi guys! Welcome to another episode of Attorney Job Logger, Law for the Everyday Layman. Today, we take up a new topic, the Securities Regulation Code, which I will be referring to as SRC for this episode and the succeeding episodes, okay? Now, if you like my videos and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Also, please remember that this is only for educational purposes and is not a substitute for proper legal advice or for studying and understanding the law. Now, let's uh, talk about the SRC. As with any subject in the study of law, the SRC will be easier to understand if you know its purpose or purposes. And these are uh, contained in the law itself, namely, first, to establish a socially conscious free market that regulates itself. Second, to encourage the widest participation of ownership in enterprises like corporations. No? Third, to enhance the democratization of wealth. Fourth, to promote the development of the capital market. Fifth, okay, this is important, to protect investors okay the purpose of the src is really to protect the investing public sixth to ensure full and fair disclosures of securities and seventh to minimize if not totally eliminate insider trading and other fraudulent or manipulative devices and practices which create distortions in the free market now i'll give you an overview okay of the src this is a long list, but it will uh, sufficiently cover the topics that the SRC has in its provisions. Okay, First, this is the most important quality or the most uh, uh, notable quality in the SRC. Okay, All securities except exempted securities or exempted transactions are required to be registered before they can be sold to the public. Okay? That's how the securities are regulated. Okay? Second, rejection and or revocation of registration of securities by the SEC or the Securities and Exchange Commission. Third, regulation of pre-need plans which are contracts that provide for performance of future services or the payment of future monetary consideration at the time of actual need for which plan holders pay cash or installment at stated prices no with or without interest okay this includes life pension education interment and other plans which the SEC may from time to time approve okay fourth protection of shareholder interest through tender offers. And I'll talk about that in the next episode. Fifth, the prohibition on fraud, manipulation, and insider trading. Next, regulation of securities market professionals. Okay? These are the brokers, no? Or dealers. Next, Revocation, refusal, or suspension of registration of those brokers, dealers, salesmen, and other associated persons. Eighth, restrictions on over-the-counter markets. Ninth, self-regulation of associations of securities brokers, dealers, and other securities-related organizations. Tenth, registration of clearing agencies. 11th, limitation on margin trading or the amount of credit that may be extended on any security. 12th, civil liabilities arising from false statements in the registration statement. 13th, civil liabilities that may arise from false statements or omissions in the prospectus, other communications, or reports. 14th, Protection against manipulation of security prices, manipulative and deceptive devices, fraud in pre-need plans and commodities future contracts, fraudulent transactions, and insider trading. And 15th, the establishment of trust funds to compensate investors for extraordinary losses or damage which they may suffer due to business failure or fraud or mismanagement of the persons with whom they may contract okay 
Now, uh, those are a lot, and I'll just be focusing on certain topics there, or which I uh, certain topics which I enumerated, no, so that uh, it won't the discussion won't be unduly long. Okay, so uh, now let's delve into the subject matter. We begin with the definition of securities, and these are shares, participation, or interests in a corporation or in a commercial enterprise or profit-making venture, and evidenced by a certificate, contract, instrument, whether written or electronic in character. Okay. Now, there are different kinds of securities, and the SRC gives us a list. Okay. Now, uh, this list includes first, shares of stocks, bonds, debentures, notes, evidences of indebtedness, or asset-backed securities. Okay? Second, we have investment contracts, certificates of interest or participation in a profit-sharing agreement, certificates of deposit for a future subscription. Okay? Third, Fractional undivided interests in oil, gas, or other mineral rights. Okay. Fourth, derivatives like options or warrants. Okay. And what are derivatives? No, derivatives are those whose value depends on the interest in or performance of an underlying security, but which does not require any investment of principal in the underlying security. Options are contracts that give the buyer the right but not the obligation to buy or sell an underlying security at a predetermined price, which is called the exercise or strike price, on or before a predetermined date, which is called the expiry date, which can only be extended in accordance with the rules of the exchange. Warrants, on the other hand, are rights to subscribe or purchase new shares or even existing shares in a company on or before a predetermined date called the expiry date, and they generally have a longer exercise period than options. Okay, so that's the main difference. Warrants may uh, generally have a longer exercise period than options. Okay, another kind of security would be uh, those certificates of assignments, certificates of participation, trust certificates voting trust certificates or similar instruments no we've talked about uh, voting trust certificates in uh, uh, our corporation series okay next we also have proprietary or non-proprietary membership certificates in corporations and of course since the list is not ex in, uh, is not exclusive we, uh, we, we allow other instruments as may in the future be determined by the SEC, okay? So uh, other, uh, other instruments may be considered as securities by the SEC. So now let's say uh, X wants to offer certificates of membership to a club, okay, that he wants to build. Let's call it uh, Paranaque Country Club. And through the funds raised by the sale of certificates of membership, that club will purchase land to be developed into a sports and health, health club. No? There's a pool, a tennis court, basketball court, gym, etc. Okay? Each certificate of membership gives the purchaser the right to use the club facilities, but no right to the income or assets of the club. And they also impose the obligation that the purchaser must pay monthly dues. Okay, so are these certificates of membership considered securities? Yes. Okay, the certificates of membership are securities because they are in the nature of investment contracts. And what are investment contracts? These are contracts, transactions, or schemes whereby a person invests his money in a common enterprise and is led to expect profits primarily through the efforts of others. And that makes it a security which must be registered. Okay? To determine whether an investment contract exists, we use the Howey test. Okay? And the Howey tests gives us the elements which must be present for a contract to be an investment contract. First, there must be a contract, transaction, or scheme. Second, 
an investment of money. Third, investment is made in a common enterprise. And fourth, expectation of profits. And fifth, profits arising primarily from the efforts of others. Now, let's go to uh, pro the procedure no? on uh, registration of securities. The example I gave earlier is an example of uh, non-proprietary share. Okay? The law requires that both proprietary and non-proprietary membership certificates or shares before they are offered for sale must be registered. Okay? A uh, proprietary share or certificate is an evidence of interest or participation of or privilege in a corporation which not only entitles the holder to enjoy the use of a specific property but also to dividends or earnings of a company. Upon liquidation of the company, a holder of, of a proprietary share or certificate shall have proportionate ownership over its assets. Specifically, the revised implementing rules of the SRC, I'll call it IRR, ah, the implementing rules, no? require that, the that all outstanding shares of corporations that will conduct initial public offerings and those that will apply for listing on an exchange by way of introduction must be registered. On the other hand, a non-proprietary share or certificate is an evidence of interest or privilege over a certain property of a corporation in view of the amount paid by the holder for the said share or certificate. While the holder is entitled to the use of the property, he has no right over the dividends or of the assets of the company upon liquidation. So both are required to be registered because under Section 8.1, no? Securities shall not be sold or offered for sale or distribution within the Philippines without a registration statement duly filed with and approved by the SEC. A registration statement is the application for registration of securities which is required to be filed with the SEC. The law also requires that prior to the sale of securities, information on the securities in such form and with such substance as the SEC may, may prescribe shall be made available to each prospective purchaser. So as a general rule, securities must be registered and this is done by filing by, by the filing of the issuer of the security of a sworn registration statement with the SEC. Okay, mag-apply siya. The statement should be signed by the issuer's principal executive officer, its principal operating officer, principal financial officer, its comptroller, principal accounting officer, the corporate secretary, and this must be accompanied by a duly verified resolution of the board as well as by a prospectus. Now, what's this prospectus? A prospectus is the document made by or on behalf of an issuer, underwriter, or dealer to sell or offer securities for sale to the public through, red, through the registration statement filed with the SEC. Okay? The prospectus should be in the form and should contain the information required by the SEC and it should be widely disseminated, given to as many people as possible, such that sufficient copies should be made available to everyone who may desire to have one. Kung sino may gusto, bigyan. Okay? In case of a subscription agreement, which I discussed in uh, the series on corporations, the front cover of that subscription agreement should contain a notice stating that interested persons are entitled to a copy of the prospectus and how that may be obtained. Now, the issuer may circulate a preliminary prospectus, so parang advance, okay, to potential investors, even prior to the effectiveness of the registration statement. It will serve as a sort of a pre-selling or pre-order, no, or pre-offering document, okay? If you're familiar with the uh, 
uh, uh, the pre-orders nowadays, no? The issuer may also offer for pre-order or pre-selling its securities, okay? And it does that through the preliminary prospectus, which is allowed under the law, okay? But the preliminary prospectus has to contain a statement to the effect that a uh, registration statement has been filed with the SEC but has not yet been declared effective. Okay? So, may disclaimer. Okay? And therefore, no offer to buy the securities can be accepted and no part of the purchase price can be received until the registration statement has become effective. And any, any such offer may be withdrawn or revoked without obligation or commitment of any kind at any time prior to notice of its acceptance given after the effective date. Now, whether the prospectus is preliminary or final in nature, it must be dated, okay? And it must be widely disseminated, okay? As I mentioned earlier, it must also contain the information required by the SEC. And what's that information? It should include the address of the principal office, email address of the issuer, the exchange, meaning the stock exchange, no? where the securities may be listed, the issuer company, contact details of the issuer's representative. And this is the important uh, information. No? It should contain the effect of the securities issue on ownership, on, on the mix of ownership, okay? Especially foreign and local ownership, okay? Such that if a person buys, what will be the effect on the current status quo, on the current owners, the current stockholders, okay? Now, the, the information should be captioned or should have uh, appropriate headings and should reasonably indicate the subject matter in clear and understandable language. Now, the use of the prospectus and the right to sell and offer for sale may be suspended if there is a material change in any of the information to be included or if the <coughs> excuse me, if the accompanying financial statements are more than 225 days old. Upon filing of the registration statement, the issuer shall pay the requisite fees to the SEC. And notice of the filing of the registration statement shall be immediately published by the issuer at its own expense in two newspapers of general circulation in the Philippines once a week for two consecutive weeks or in such other manner as the SEC may prescribe. Okay? Now, that notice should state that a registration statement for the sale of such securities has been filed and that the registration statement, its attachments, are open to the inspection of the public at the SEC, of course, during business hours, and uh, the public may uh, obtain copies as long as, of course, they pay for the reproduction. Now, within 45 days after the date of filing no, of the registration statement or by such later date to which the issuer has consented, the Commission shall declare the registration either effective or rejected. Okay? So, uh, like approve or deny, but the law uses the words effective or rejected. Okay? Unless the applicant is allowed to amend the registration statement. Now, if the SEC allows the registration, then the SEC shall issue an order declaring the registration statement to be effective. And a record of the registration shall be kept in the Register of Securities. That's where they keep all the records of registration. Now, the issuer, after the effectivity, effectiveness of the registration statement, no, the issuer shall thereafter state under oath in every prospectus that uh, it may issue, it will state that all registration requirements have been met and all information are true and correct as represented in the statement. Any untrue statement of fact or omission to state a material fact required to be stated okay, or necessary to make the statement not misleading shall constitute fraud, in which case, 
if a third person suffers damage because of such untrue statement of material fact or omission thereof, then that third person may sue and recover damages from the issuer, the, um, any director at the time of the filing of the registration statement, anyone named in the statement, every auditor or auditing firm named as having certified any financial statements which are used in connection with the registration statement or prospectus, the underwriter, or any person who has taken part or certified the statement or matter used in connection with the registration statement. Those are the persons who may be held liable, okay, in case of damage arising from untrue statements of a material fact or omission of a material fact. Now, the sale of securities subject of uh, the registration statement shall commence within 10 business days from the date of effectivity of the registration statement and shall continue until the end of the offering period or until the sale is terminated by the issuer. Okay? If the sale is not commenced within 10 business days, then the registration statement shall be cancelled and all fees that the issuer has paid will now be forfeited. After the termination of the offering, the issuer will now file a notice of completion or termination with the SEC within 3 business days from the date of completion and it should state the number of securities sold. However, in the case of shelf registration, what is shelf registration? This is a delayed and continuous offering and sale of securities, no? such as those to be issued in tranches at more than one instance after the registration statement has become effective. In case of shelf registration, they may be offered for a period not to exceed three years from the effectivity date of the registration statement. Okay, that, that discussion pertained to the if the SEC declares the registration statement effective. Now, the SEC may also reject a registration statement and refuse registration of the security or it may revoke the effectivity of a registration statement and the registration of the security thereunder after notice and hearing okay how the sec will just issue an order if it finds that first the issuer has been uh, judicially declared insolvent or has violated the provisions of the src or any orders of the sec or has uh, engaged uh, has engaged or is about to engage in fraudulent transactions or has made any false or misleading representation of material facts in any prospectus of the issuer or its securities or has failed to comply with any requirement that the SEC may impose as a condition for registration of the security for which a statement has been filed. Okay. The SEC may also reject or uh, refuse registration or revoke the effectivity of a registration statement if the registration statement is on its face incomplete or inaccurate in any material respect or includes any untrue statement of a material fact or omits to state a material fact required to be stated therein or necessary to make the statement not misleading. And the third ground for uh, rejection, revocation, no, is if the issuer, any officer, director, or controlling person of the issuer or person performing similar functions or any underwriter has been convicted of an offense involving moral turpitude and or fraud or is restrained for violations of securities, commodities, or other laws. Now, take note, not all securities are required to be registered as the law provides for exempt securities and exempt transactions. Now, uh, the following are the exempt securities and they do not have to be uh, registered. Okay, 
any security issued or guaranteed by the government of the Philippines no or any political subdivision or agency or by any person controlled or supervised by or acting as an instrumentality of the Philippine government second any security issued or guaranteed by the government of any country sa labas no with which the Philippines maintains diplomatic relations or by any state, province, or political subdivision thereof on the basis of reciprocity. Kailangan pantay, okay? We have to have relations with that country and they should also grant the same rights to us in order for that security, be, security to be exempt from registration. Third, certificates issued by a receiver or by a trustee in bankruptcy duly approved by the proper adjudicatory body. Fourth, any security or its derivatives, the sale or transfer of which, by law, is under the supervision and regulation of the Insurance Commission, the HLURB, meaning the Housing and Land Use Regulatory Board, or the BIR, Bureau of Internal Revenue. And uh, last, any security issued by a bank except its own shares of stock. Okay? So those securities do not need to be registered. Now, take note, this list is not exhaustive. Okay? As Section 9.2 serves as a catch-all provision when it says that the SEC may, by rule or regulation after public hearing, add to the foregoing any class of securities if it finds that the enforcement of this code with, with respect to such securities is not necessary in the public interest and for the protection of investors. Okay, So that's the test. You check if, it's, uh, uh, if uh, public interest and the protection of investors is material. Okay, And why are these securities exempt? Either because the issuer, issuer of the security is an entity that can be trusted not to deceive the investor, such as the Philippine government or the government of uh, the, any other country which, with which the Philippines has diplomatic relations and uh, re enjoys reciprocity. Second reason, the issuer is either regulated, supervised, or monitored by another government entity who can be expected to protect the interest of investors in the same manner as the SEC, such as the Insolvency Court, the Insurance Commission, HLURB, BIR or, BIR or BSP. Now, the law also provides for exempt transactions, okay? Meaning that in case a security is sold as a result of any of the following transactions, the requirement of registration is not necessary. In other words, the security involved in an, in an exempt transaction is not its, in itself exempt, but the circumstances under which the security is sold make the requirement of registration unnecessary in the public interest or for the protection of investors. Okay, Just take note of that. No? In the whole uh, SRC, always just remember the public interest and protection of investors okay that's your uh, test okay so uh, here's a list of the exempt uh, transactions if you uh, miss one or you can rewind or you just check the codal okay first securities sold at any uh, judicial sale or sale by an executor administrator guardian or receiver or trustee in insolvency or bankruptcy Second, buy or for the account of a pledge holder or mortgagee or any of a ple uh, pledge lien holder selling of uh, offering for sale or delivery in the ordinary course of business and not for the purpose of avoiding the provision of this code in order to liquidate a bona fide debt. Okay? In other words, no, if you... Uh, took up pledge already no or uh, any other similar contract no in case that security is sold to satisfy the debt then this will be considered as an exempt transaction in which uh, registration is not necessary next an isolated transaction in which any security is sold offered for sale 
subscription or delivery by the owner thereof or by his representative for the owner's account then such sale or offer of sale subscription uh, which is not made in the course of repeated and successive transaction of a like character by such owner or on his account no in this case it's an isolated transaction no it's uh he's not doing it as a uh, uh, business no uh, in such a nature that it is repeated okay next the distribution by a corporation actively engaged in the business authorized by its articles of incorporation of securities to its stockholders or other security holders as a stock dividend or other distribution out of surplus in short stock dividends the issuance of stock dividends which i explained in my series on corporations the issuance of stock dividends is not an uh, is does not have to be registered no it's an exempt transaction next the issuance of bonds or notes secured by mortgage upon real estate or tangible personal property when the entire mortgage together with all the bonds or notes are sold to a single purchaser at a single sale next the issue and delivery of any security in exchange for any other security of the same issuer pursuant to a right of conversion entitling the holder of the security surrendered in exchange to make such conversion okay so it's just parang nagpalit lang sila okay conversion next brokers transactions executed upon customers orders on any registered exchange or other trading market Next, subscriptions for shares of the capital stocks of a corporation prior to the incorporation thereof or in pursuance of an increase in its authorized capital stocks when no expense is incurred or no commission, compensation, or remuneration is paid or given in connection with the sale or disposition of such securities and only when the purpose for soliciting giving or taking of such subscriptions is to comply with the requirements of such law as to the percentage of the capital stock of a corporation which should be subscribed before it can be registered and duly incorporated so in other words in short no if the corporation is just uh, complying with the law to which requires it to increase its capital stock in case there is such a law no then uh, the this uh, this increase no in the uh, shares do not have to be registered it will fall under an exempt transaction under this uh, paragraph no another exempt transaction would be uh, the exchange of securities by the issuer with the existing security holders exclusively where no commission or other remuneration is paid or given directly or indirectly for soliciting such exchange and uh, finally the sale of securities by an issuer to fewer than 20 persons in the Philippines during any 12 month period okay ah, there's one more except transaction the sale of securities to any number of the following qualified buyers bank registered investment house insurance company pension fund or retirement plan maintained by the government of the Philippines investment company or such other person as the sec may determine as qualified buyers okay again if you uh, had trouble taking all these down do not worry this is codal just read the law you will find it there just take note of my uh, additional explanations okay now uh, similar to uh, the exempt securities this list of exempt transactions is not exhaustive okay because section 10.2 allows the sec to exempt other transactions if it finds that the requirements of registration is not necessary in the public interest or for the protection of investors such as by the reason of the small amount involved or the limited character of the public offering now the issuer or its representative may apply for the exemption by filing a notice with the SEC for confirmation of the exemption and until there is a confirmation any person claiming the exemption has the burden of proof 
to prove that it is entitled to the exemption which may be challenged by the SEC at any time. Take note that even if a particular class of securities may be exempt from registration, any sale or transfer thereof must still comply with the provisions of the SRC. And in case of a sale or offer for the sale of securities in an exempt transaction, it will not be exempt from civil or other liabilities if there was fraud or any other cause of action. Just because it is exempt from registration does not mean it's exempt from other uh, faults, no? like fraud or any other problem that may have happened. No? Definitely, any request for confirmation of exemption shall not be allowed shall not be allowed if it is a part of a plan or a scheme to evade compliance with the registration requirements of the SRC, in which case, of course, registration will be mandatory. Okay, So uh, that's it for uh, our discussion on uh, the brief overview of the SRC, the kinds of securities, and the procedure for registration. I'll be talking about uh, other matters in the succeeding episodes. Okay. So, uh, again, check out this face shield uh, that I bought, okay? I'll uh, link, put the link in the description below. And I hope you may have picked up a thing or two. And I hope to see you next time, guys. Okay, see you soon. Bye.